Hi, and welcome to CloudAcademy.com's video series on hosting your WordPress site in the cloud on AWS. In this video, we'll learn how to offload your WordPress database function to the AWS RDS service to allow you to scale up and meet the demands of your millions of users. Amazon RDS provides enormous flexibility and reliable access while automatically keeping your database software patched and your data securely backed up. The first thing we'll have to do is create a new group and user in IAM. We'll first click on groups, create a new group. Let's call it administration. Click on next step. Let's give this group administrator access. So we'll select administrator access. Next step. Review and create the group. Now let's create a new user. Let's call this user Ubuntu. Just happens to match the name we have given the owner of the database we'll be using in our EC2 instance. Create. Let's close. Let's create a password for this new user Ubuntu, assign a custom password, and let's assign a custom password. Apply. Now let's add our user to a group, and I'll bet you can guess which group we'd like to add him to, the administration group. We see that he is currently in administration, and we could remove him from that group if we so desire, but he just got there. There's no reason to throw him out just yet. Now let's go create an RDS instance. Let's get started now. We'll select an engine. In our case, that obviously is going to be MySQL because that's the database powering our WordPress instance. We, in our case, don't want to use multi-AZ deployment or provisioned IOPS storage. Both of those can be critically important. Multi-A to Z deployment allows for redundant backups. In case one server goes down somewhere, there's another one that'll have your data and be able to provide it to internet users. And provisioned IOPS storage can really speed up access to the database. But for our purposes, that's absolutely not necessary. So let's go on to next. The engine is MySQL, regular license. The version of MySQL we want to use is, is the latest. It's fine for us. DB instance class, we'll go with the smallest one available. Multi-AZ deployment, we'll say no. Allocated storage has to be at least five gigabytes, and that's more than enough for us. Provisioned IOPS will say no. The DB instance identifier, let's call it WordPress DB. The same happens to be the same name as our WordPress database, but it doesn't have to be. Master username, we'll go with Ubuntu, and we'll enter our password twice and move on to the next step. This is our VPC, our virtual private cloud. It's good to remember that. Our subnet group is subnet WP. Is it publicly accessible? No, we don't want this to be publicly accessible. We want this to be accessible only to our instance. The availability zone, we would like to be in US East 1A because that matches the zone where our EC2 instance, which serves WordPress, actually lives. The VPC security group will stick with the default. Our database name, we're not going to enter right now. We're going to do that from the command line in our EC2 instance later. That seems to be everything we need. We'll find out in a minute if it was, because if there's anything we've left out, the web interface will catch us on it. Seems that everything was done properly. It'll take a few minutes for that to complete, but for now, we're where we want to be. While the RDS instance is still launching, let's take a look at some of its configuration. At this point, there's still no endpoint available because the 
the uh, the RDS isn't uh, isn't actually running yet. However, let's take a look at security groups. There is one security group that exists. Let's highlight it. It's the EC2 security group, and it's called default. It's authorized. We have already authorized it, and it is the security group that this RDS instance will use. Let's go back to the RDS dashboard to see if our RDS instance has completed. It hasn't quite completed. As you can see, there's little circles running around in circles, getting himself busy. But at least we have an endpoint. Let's highlight the endpoint and copy it because we're going to use it pretty quickly. Now we'll copy or dump the database, the WordPress database on our EC2 instance up to our RDS instance using MySQL dump. MySQL dump dash u, Ubuntu is our username, dash p, so it's going to prompt for a password. Then we specify dash dash databases will be WordPress DB. We pipe that, we pipe the dump of WordPress DB to the host, that is the endpoint that Amazon RDS has given us using port 3306, specifying that we'll be using the user Ubuntu. The user on the RDS instance is also named Ubuntu. It doesn't have to be, but it was. And using our ultra-secret, very high password, actually, password. Hit enter. We are prompted for our local password. And everything seems to have worked. Now, let's update our wp-config-php file to reflect the new location of our database. sudo nano wp-config.php We will scroll down till we get to define db host. No longer is it localhost. It is now the endpoint which was given to us by AWS, which in this case is a MyDB instance etc etc that colon 3306 that's the port we are going to use it's the default mysql port let's control x y to overwrite and save this file enter to finish it and let's see if that still works let's send our browser to our wordpress site to see if it still works we have a blog and even a blog entry, which includes a hello from Cloud Academy. It seems everything's up and running just the way it should.